All right, this is re being recorded. Something I say at the beginning of every single webinar is watch this again. Maybe not just this particular long call calendar webinar, but something along the lines of the long call calendar, maybe one of the ones that I've done for, um, you know, options for intermediaries or something like that. Uh, Cause we cover different things. This is more specific to trying to build out a portfolio or uh, something along those lines, whereas before it might be more along the lines of earnings uh, coming up and um, and you guys drive the content. Like I said, before I started this webinar, uh, feel free to reach out in the questions box with any questions you have throughout this. I'm not one of those guys that says, hey, wait to the end to ask your questions. I want to make sure you guys are clear of concept before we move on. Uh, I'm trying to drill down on some of these things. And if you have a question, uh, somebody else probably has the same question and uh, may not be asking it. So please feel free to do that and it will uh, help speed this along and get everybody involved. All right. Uh, this is implementing options in uh, to build a portfolio. This is the long call calendar. It is a neutral to bullish strategy, especially the way I set it up. It's a little bit more bullish, but um, uh, we'll talk about all of the nuances that go into building this strategy. It's relatively easy to build, but there's a lot of other ancillary things before you start trading options that we need to know uh, about this strategy. So we'll, without further ado, let me get on with it. Uh, for those of you who are new to this, we are or new to my webinars. My name is Eric Wilkinson. I uh, used to work on the floor of the Chicago Board of Trade as a trader, and I've done media hits with uh, most mainstream media outlets like CNBC, Fox, uh, Business of Wall Street Journal, Business Insider, and I've talked about everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Uh, I started out trading in college with some money I had earned and trying to get a psychology degree. One thing I always said was my psychology degree was probably better suited for trading than even my financial degree. Uh, but I started trading uh, with a psychology degree and then switched it over to finance after graduating uh, with finance. I moved straight to Chicago, like literally walked on the floor and just started begging for a job. And as a runner, like one of these guys down here, moved up into the pits and been trading my own money ever since then. And I've traded everything from stocks, financial futures, commodity futures, currencies, and options on all these products and all market conditions. If you've been trading through this market condition, it's one of the doozies for sure that uh, will go down in history. This is one of our disclaimers that says any opinions, news, research, and analysis or other information is considered general commentary. It does not constitute investment advice. That is in a very important statement there, you guys. I am not trying to give you guys trade recommendations. That's not what I do. That's not what I believe in. I don't believe in the herd mentality. I think that you guys out there have as good of a grasp on um, your assumptions in the market and this environment than anybody else. So I think that you should go with your guts and uh, find out what you think you, uh, an underlying is gonna do, a stock or whatever, an ETF, and find the correct option strategy for that particular market assumption, okay? Uh, and do your own homework, past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. You can follow me on Twitter at Wolfman's blog. Our parent company is at ProTrader Strategy, or at ProTrader Strat. Um, they throw out all kinds of market wisdom and uh, deals and stuff like that. Mike's going to be more market commentary, if anything else. And you can follow us on Facebook at ProTraderStrategies.com for different types of uh, webinars and what's coming up, just to keep you informed. I do daily market commentaries every once in a while. We'll throw those up on there and you can uh, see what trades I'm doing, uh, when and where I put them on and you know, win, lose, or draw. All right, so let's get into the long call calendar. It's a pretty simple strategy to build. Like I said, it is uh, a calendar spread or horizontal spread. Basically, we're going to be using two different expiration cycles. And th there's benefits to that, and there's also some 
gray area that goes with that because of the different expiration cycles. It makes it difficult to figure out like a break even, for instance. But what we're going to be doing is selling. Some people say an at the money. I like to go with a little bit further out with the out of the money. Um, and the at the money call, you'd probably be looking at like the 45 delta in that front month that you're selling. The back month where you're buying the at the money would be the same strike. All right. If you're using different strike locations, that's considered a diagonal. And we're going to be doing the same strike location. So that creates the calendar. But like I said, I like to use the uh, out of the money. If you're going online, they're going to talk about doing the in the money and sometimes uh, or sometimes in the money. But most of the time they'll talk about doing the at the money calls or yeah. Uh, but I like to go just a little bit further out because this strategy and especially in this environment does very well if the market just kind of trades sideways, right? Well, you guys all know that we haven't had that straight sideways trading market recently. We've had more of a whipsaw kind of thing. That works better with these out of the money uh, calls as we're going to be looking at. As a matter of fact, the best case scenario would be to have it trade like that and then rally up. You know, you have this front month where our short call is. And then we have our long call out here where you could have this short call expire worthless. And then you have this long call on for very cheap, all right? Um, I also like to set this strategy up just coming out of an earnings. Now, keep in mind in a couple of weeks, we're gonna have a big earnings cycle coming up. So um, you're gonna have to be a little bit more choosy about it because we don't wanna be selling this short call in an earnings month or like if they had their earnings right here, that wouldn't necessarily be where we would want to uh, be selling that short call way ahead of time. All right. Uh, we'd rather have the earnings kind of lie right there. That would be the best case scenario uh, if you were bullish or thought that they were going to do very well in the earnings, say, for instance, like um, Costco. Uh, if you expect Costco to have gangbuster earnings based on everybody going and eating in and buying food from there and everything else, then we could expect that their earnings are going to do very well. Something else I just learned about Costco, I guess if you live in New Jersey, you don't have to have a Costco card to buy the gas there. So that could help their overall um, sales as well. Um, so. Obviously, we want this short call to expire worthless. You get that long call on for the longer duration. That is if you have a bit of a higher risk tolerance. I'll talk about my exit strategies and things as we go along here. Um, so looking at like the 36 delta here, this would be like the 45 delta here. And then you're just going to pick the same strikes in the one further expiration cycle that you're going to be buying. Right. All right. Max profit is basically when the stock price reaches the uh, or the stock reaches that short strike price. Because remember, I talked about having the 36 delta. So we want it to rally up to that strike that we are going to be implementing. And that is only at expiration. You're going to be able to see profitability before that. Uh, but there is a. Uh, it, this kind of looks like on uh, the analyze chart, it's going to kind of look like this in a sense. That's a little exaggerated, but um, in the way we're going to be setting it up is probably buying somewhere right around, you know, the underlying will be right here and our short strike will land right around in there. Okay. Because I like to pick that out of the money. So if it's trading, in and around here, you're going to be closer to the downside. So that's why we are wanting it to be a little bit more bullish to the upside with this strategy. Okay. And if you're picking the at the money, obviously uh, you are wanting it to stay right there uh, for the duration of that um, front expiration cycle, which we'll talk about when that is. All right. Your max loss of beauty in this is, is it's the premium paid. Anytime you're doing a debit on that, it's the premium paid. That's why I showed that chart kind of going like that. You know, it will level off at the same level to the upside or 
or the downside or the upside here. Okay. So we will know exactly how much we could lose on this, which makes it a nice trade, especially in an environment like this, where if you were just doing short calls or, uh, or a short put for a bullish assumption in this type of environment, then, you know, you have different, much different risk parameters on that. All right. So some of my rules that I talk about, this is what I'm saying. You know, we have all kinds of option strategies, but how do you narrow it down to the one that you uh, want to implement in and around it? Well, if you are looking at XYZ, all right, XYZ stock, first thing to look at, if you guys watch those daily market commentaries, you saw that today I went out and I, I put Thor into my portfolio. Um, and I didn't use options. And the reason why is because it didn't fit picking the right underlying for trading options. The bid ask on those options in Thor, which they actually make like RVs and stuff like that. My assumption in, in Thor was that most people are probably not gonna be jumping on a plane anytime soon. Everybody's sitting at home trying to social distance. Well, people are gonna start getting cabin fever, especially coming into the summer. Are they going to go and stay in a hotel or an Airbnb? and worry about who's been there before. Well, you know, there, there's gonna be a large portion of the population, I think, that will go out and buy a pop-up or a, a trailer, um, fifth wheel or an RV or something like that. So um, I thought for the long duration, that would be something that I could put into my long-term portfolio. Uh, and with, because it doesn't, I didn't wanna do a synthetic long stock in there because it doesn't fit picking the right underlying. So under normal circumstances, which with the volatility, you know, being 50 right now, the VIX, uh, 50 something, I didn't check it right before we went on there, but if, you know, upwards of 50, you know, that's the new 20, which used to be pretty hot. So um, bid asks in the option montage have gotten a little bit wide. So, uh, but generally speaking, when this starts shaking out, we're starting to see everything uh, normalized a little bit more. Even the option pricing is starting to tighten up. People are starting to, you know, participate in uh, free market price discovery in there. But basically, I usually say, you know, if a stock is less than $100, then the bid ask, bid to the offer, bid ask should be basically uh, less than or equal to 10 cents wide, all right? And if it's greater than a $100 stock, then we're gonna move the decimal place, you know, three ticks. So like, let's just say it's $235. Basically, you're gonna look at moving the decimal three ticks to the left, that would equal, what, 23 cents, right? Or 24 cents. Right now, it's probably two times that. They're, we're looking at stocks that are trading 200 $30, you know, with 75 cent wide markets. Okay. Um, so you're going to have to do a little bit more price discovery in this. And one thing I always say, especially on the higher price stocks is when you start seeing those bid ask go a little bit wider, it doesn't cost you anything to cancel and replace an order, right? So go a little bit wider than definitely where the mid market is in this, since we're buying it, you're going to go a little bit lower in price and cancel replacing. Put the order in. If it doesn't get filled, you know, I'm not saying wait 15 minutes, but the give it enough time for all the algos to auto leg this spread, which means they're going to be looking out for different offers in different markets and stuff and try and leg your spread for you. So, Cancel, replace it, you know, put the bid in a little bit lower than probably where you think you're going to get billed and then go back, cancel, replace, uh, go up a couple of pennies, uh, cancel, go up a couple of pennies, replace it. All right. And, and do that uh, until you get about to the mid market. And then I'd probably let it sit for a little bit. All right. So um, let me pull up my platform real quick and uh, pull this out. So what I'm talking about with this, and this is during open market operation, we're gonna be looking at the um, markets that are closest to expiration, the monthlies, not necessarily the weeklies because the weeklies are a little bit thinner. You can see there's a lot of volume and open interest going on in 
UAL. Uh, but what we want to look at here is the bid to the offer. It's a $23 stock right now, which is hilarious to say. You can see the markets are a little bit wider. We would expect these to be closer to 10 cents wide. After the market closes, especially with this volatility, everybody is canceling their orders. So uh, these markets aren't necessarily good representations of what is going on in the market. But then we could look at something like Apple, um, where it is a $240 stock, move the decimal three ticks to the left, 24 cents is what we should be seeing down here during open market operations. And I believe me, I, I look at these all day long. Apple is uh, easily, you know, 10 cents wide to the bid offer on some of these, okay? Um, we could probably look at uh, something in um, the ETF world, like XLF, uh, and see that it's under 50, it should be 10 cents wide here. So it's gotten a little bit wide after close. So that's the rule. Um, and that makes it a green light, you guys. It's much, uh, you know, for the, all the years I've been doing this, it almost always fits this rule for especially the names that you've all heard of. Uh, something to do right now really is to go in and check the volume and open interest, which is going to be a better indication as that. How many eyeballs? That's really what we're looking for is how many eyeballs are on this market at any given day. You can see huge open interest, a lot of volume going on in any given day. And um, therefore, when you go in there and you see these wide markets, but you see there's a lot of volume and open interest in there, you could probably say you're going in here, mid-market would probably be what, 75 cents or something. So you could probably get in there and start bidding it at uh, for the calls or something like that a little bit better. This is the one we're going to be selling. So start out at around 90 cents and start seeing if the market uh, starts filling in a little bit better. Because there's eyeballs in there. The guy that's 56 cents knows that he can probably bid it up if he sees a better market as well. So that's where free market price discovery is coming in. It's just a little bit tentative right now with this particular rule. And picking the right environment. Now, normally I talk about implied volatility percent, which we do want. Uh, lower volatility in the markets uh, or in this underlying that we have. Everything has elevated uh, volatility, but we can still take advantage of it. The real rule here, though, for this one is that we do not want volatility or Vega, we don't want ball to have a wide difference between the two months. Because remember, we're using two separate months. So we want it to be less than uh two percent increase that's basically from one month to the next month one that we are selling we want to have the volatility be um less than a two percent difference on an in because volatility one thing about volatility guys it affects the further duration more than the front months but right now it's again it's a different situation where we're seeing the volatility in these front months much higher than the volatility in the back months, all right? So we could even see right here, um, volatility is generally going to be higher than some of these other ones in the back months, all right? So what usually happens is an increase. So we can see that this volatility, let me get over to the Vega. So this is Vega, this is implied volatility, it's 70, all right? And then if we go out here to the further duration, it's 72 and a half. So it's a little bit outside of that range. Um, you know, it's got the two handle on it, so I would still see say that that is, uh, you know, a relatively green light. Three to 4% increase, it starts getting to be like a yellow light where you gotta start being a little bit more cautious on it. The reason why is we're selling this front month, and if it has super low volatility, we're just not getting paid for taking that risk, and we're having to pay for a lot of volatility in this. And if the volatility starts going down, it affects the further duration more than the uh, the front month. Then we're gonna it's gonna start hurting us. That's why it's difficult to come up with like a break even on this or 
uh, your max profit and things like that, it, you know, I, I can usually give you a finite number. Like if it's a spread, you can come up with a finite number for this. Well, as volatility fluctuates, it's affecting these different months differently. And that makes it where it's basically impossible to come up with an exact max profit or an exact break even, which when we get into pulling up the platform, you guys, I will show you on the Analyze tab how that all works um, and why it makes it very difficult. But here you can see that volatility out here uh, is going to be more than the volatility coefficient up here. So uh, these prices are gonna move much more. And if I go even further out, you'll see that the volatility uh, is double what we're seeing here at the 43 days to expiration, all right? So volatility affects further duration more. So if we were gonna do this calendar spread in XLF between May and July, that wouldn't fit that rule. It's increase or even the May to the June. It's um, six percentage points difference almost, right? To the upside, that would be a red light. Anything over uh, five percentage points increase is just a red light. The reason why is because, like I said, when we're buying this one out here, we're not getting, we're paying a lot for volatility and it could hurt us if it starts going down. And in this elevated environment, that could start happening very quickly. Whereas in the front month, it's not gonna be affected as much, all right? So try and stay away from massive increases to this. Now, if this month was higher, Right. Say this was 78 and this was 72. Well, that means we're getting paid for selling this option. Then we have to pay for volatility back here. So that's a good scenario. And actually in this, uh, as of recently, we're seeing a lot more of that where the volatility up front is much higher than the volatility down the road. So uh, a good opportunity for like calendars, and uh, diagonals, which is a webinar I've already done on the diagonals uh, that you can go and check out. And diagonals might be a better uh, strategy for that long duration bullish or bearish uh, assumption than the long call calendar or the long put calendar uh, because of the massive fluctuations we've been seeing. We don't want necessarily a big, huge move happening right away. Is what we wanna stay away from. That's one of the uh, things we don't wanna see as a big, huge move in either direction with the calendars, all right? So the right environment, you know, say, you know, somewhere between three and 4% increase, uh, percent increase would be like a yellow, and then you know, greater than five or five percent would be a red light. All right. Two handle is what I'm really talking about here. You know, when I say less than two, so you know, two point five. Uh, that's got the two handle on it. So that's not necessarily less. Maybe I should just say less than three percent right now. All right. Duration. What we're trying to do is we're trying to exploit volatility and theta decay and all of that stuff, right? Well, in that front month we're selling, we wanna sell somewhere around 35 days to expiration, as you can see down here is days to expiration. Why? Because that one, we're selling this call here. We want that call to go equal zero, right? If it goes out zero, then that means we've got this long call out here that's retaining its value. Right, so we want the long call to retain value and we want that short call to basically plummet in value. So that's what we're trying to take advantage of by selling that call. This call here is trying to finance us buying this long-term call, okay? So what you can do, especially if you've skipped like an expiration cycle in here, if these were the expiration cycles on the red lines here, you know, you could, buy this call out here in time, sell this call here, and then once this kind of decays out, you can roll this call back to here, collect more credit, all right? Lower that overall basis of what you paid for 
um, this strategy because it is a debit spread, remember? And when you're doing a debit in a strategy, that is uh, always your defined risk there, all right? And strikes is pretty simple. We're looking at, you know, the, the 36 delta, all right? So that's when we're saying getting the right strikes, I, especially in this environment, 36 delta-ish. Um, that's usually what I do because it has to do with the standard deviation. This is about a half a standard deviation move on a uh, short uh, call, all right? The long call, isn't going to be a 36 delta, you guys. It might be like a 40 delta or something like that. But this is the short call is what we're looking at for 36 delta. Now, if you think that this underlying is just going to trade in a tight range, you know, you can go a little bit closer to the, the 40 delta or the 45 delta, the at the monies. But I like to go a little bit further away. And as a matter of fact, I would lean on moving it even out. Like if there wasn't a 36 delta, I might be picking like the 30 delta, all right? So I'm always going to, especially in this environment, lean towards going further away from where that underlying is trading, right? Because I don't want my short call to get hit. I want that short call to expire worthless, if at all possible. Um, also, uh, I like to, with this strategy, when I'm building it out, risk one to make two at least. So if I, I'm risking a dollar, I'd want it to go out where I... I can sell it out for um, you know three dollars or something like that. So risking one to make two, I risk one dollar to make that extra two dollars. So if I bought it for a dollar and sell it for three dollars, that is like a triple, you guys. I like to go for singles and doubles and kind of bang away at it. I don't like to go for home runs. I don't like to go for um, the huge you know uh, grand slam. Right? I try to. Move the players around the field, get in and out of these strategies as relatively quickly as possible. Which brings us to what are we looking for for the exit strategy? So I am looking for usually 30, uh, 30 to 50 percent increase in my premium. All right. So, for instance, if I, I paid a dollar debit, if I did it for a dollar debit, all right, then when this is trading a dollar thirty, that that would be when I'm getting out, all right, somewhere between a dollar thirty to a dollar fifty, all right. If you get that dollar fifty, that's most likely where I'm pulling the ripcord on this. If it's just trading sideways and it didn't move anywhere, and I can get that short call to expire worthless, then your your profit potential is going to go a lot higher, right? Because then you don't have that defined risk strategy. It's all, um, it could be considered unlimited to the upside for your profitability if the market uh, started really rallying. But I'm looking for an exit strategy of a 30 to 50% increase in my premium, all right? Don't, don't forget, you can roll this out, especially in something like Apple, you could roll this out through the short calls, out through the, um, the weeklies as well. So. Uh, just try not to sell that short call necessarily well ahead of an earnings. I'd rather ride that long call out uh, if I've lowered the overall cost basis on it. All right, so without boring you guys any further, let's try and get on with the uh, trading platform here, and I'll start pulling it up. You guys hit me up in the questions box if you have a stock that you are long-term bearish on, and in the short time, you know, you think that, you know, it, we've had these big moves, it feels like a lot of things I like to use when I'm trading this thing called the point of control. So there's a lot of stocks. Uh, if you can find a stock that comes into this point of control area, you can see a lot of times what happens is when they get close to this point of control, they have a tendency to settle down for uh, a little while, which is a good thing for this stock. All right, You can see that they did have some fluctuations here, uh, but it had a tendency to settle down during the time it was at the point of control, it breaks out a little bit. So this would be a good scenario to have sold uh, the short calls and have your long calls on later on where they expire worthless if you were in and around this area. So you guys can throw out some uh, stocks you want me to look at to go through the rules. I'm gonna look at 
um, XLP because, you know, I'm trying to think in this environment, what would I be long-term bullish in, right? Is it retail? Probably not so much uh, with the malls being closed and stuff like that. But, you know, the consumer staples, I mean, these guys are going gangbusters, right? You go into a grocery store, the, sh the shelves are pretty much empty. So heading into an earnings for these guys uh, might be a good opportunity to have on some uh, long calls during that earnings. Now, XLP is a uh, an ETF of consumer staples. It does have tobacco in it, um, but it also has food like, you know, I think Pepsi's in there, Coca-Cola's in there. Uh, those are things that people are buying and consuming at home a lot more right now. So there is opportunity for consumer staples in this environment, despite the fact that we might start seeing an economic slowdown. Uh, people, More and more people are eating at home and buying from, say, Costco or Walmart. You could even do it on, uh, is what I'm looking at. You know, maybe Netflix. Uh, a lot of people are, you know, doing Netflix and chill, right? Um, would I want to do it in Southwest Airlines? Probably not. That doesn't seem like a, a really great one to do. Something like Amazon? Yeah, sure. Especially with the uh, AWS, you know, the, uh, that's their, uh, um, their uh, uh, AWS is the uh, cloud services, right? So as more and more people are consuming on line that's going to drive profitability there maybe nvidia because more and more people are working from home have to build out their home computers and stuff like that so there's opportunities out there i'm going to look at xlp so uh, i want to look at the monthlies closest to expiration you can see that these markets are absolutely horrible right now because it's after the market and everybody's canceled their orders but believe me i looked at this before the markets closed and it was fitting my rule. So um, I'm going to build it out because I had a feeling this was going to end up like this. The 36-ish delta, I'm going to go with uh, what I had already looked at so I can price this in correctly. Sell those for zero cents. So I want to sell. Why isn't my thing popping up? Let's do this. Uh, I'm going to go to closest to 35 days to expiration. Okay, so I'm going to do the May to the uh, June. And I, you know, this spread is quoted as a June, May spread. And the reason why is because you're buying it out here and you're doing it for a debit. But I set it up by going to the front month, selling the uh, front one, and then buying the back one at the same strike. So I look for that 36-ish delta and then go back to these back ones. I'm gonna go uh, for the 57s and buy that one. And that's right around the pricing that I was getting uh, for the uh, um, before the close happened. So that's pretty good pricing uh, for what this was during the open market. Um, then we're going to be looking at the analyze tab on this. So we know going into this that my debit is the most I can lose. Now in the meantime, if I look at uh, 57, you know, we don't want it to rally up too much, but you can see it's kind of settling down right here. Uh, so if I expect it to not rally a whole lot, get back up into here, get this front month to decay, uh, get those front 57 calls to decay, then that is the perfect scenario. So I don't care if this market kind of sloughs off a little bit during the meantime, right? Uh, if the market wants to start correcting a little bit to the downside, because that will help me get those 57 calls off quicker. Because as the market goes down, those 57 calls are going to be affected by the delta as well, right? So as the market goes down, I'm gonna lose, uh, for every dollar move down, I'm gonna lose about 40 some cents uh, for every dollar down move. So if I can leg out of this, I'm okay with that. If you guys, uh, what to leg out of this spread you can cover that short call for you know maybe a nickel or a dime that's something i would do because that's the one that's creating more risk for you right uh the long call you have it on for a longer duration especially 
if your market assumption hasn't changed. If something happens uh, and your market assumption changes in this strategy, get out of it all together, all right? Anytime you, your market assumption or you get that gut feeling like, I don't like this trade anymore, get out of it. There's always opportunity out there in something else. So um, that's something I always talk about is your uh, limbic part of your brain, which is the part of your brain that can't, doesn't have like a voice. That's really what your gut is. And it processes so many things that you can't even um, grasp that that's why it's trying to give you that gut. It's like when you're walking out of the house and it's like, oh, for some reason I feel like I'm forgetting something. Well, you probably are because your limbic can't tell you, hey, dummy, you forgot your keys, you know, or you forgot your phone. It's just trying to say, you know, it's giving you that feeling that, hey, you're forgetting something because it's processing more than what you are. You know, your front part of your brain is trying to be the analytical part and saying, no, I haven't forgotten anything. And then all of a sudden you get down the road and you're like, oh, I did forget my phone. Um, and that was probably your limit trying to tell you, stick around here until you figure out you've got your phone stuck over there on the counter, dummy. All right. So uh, always follow your limit. If you got that gut feeling kind of telling you, I don't like this, all of a sudden get out. All right. So um, I wouldn't mind this to have a little bit of correction so I could cover this uh, short call in the May relatively quickly. And like I said, you know, if you're collecting like a dollar fifty for it and it got down to say a, a a quarter or a dime or something like that, then I would probably leg out of the spread. I've already used that 57 short call to help finance my uh, long call in the long duration. Uh, so I would be okay with, this is one of the few strategies that I would say leg out of it, okay? Uh, or that I wouldn't have a problem with you legging out of it. Um, so normally I'm usually like put them on, take them off at the same time. But in this case, I would say you can leg out of the, buy that long, or, or sorry, buy back that short call that helped finance that long call, okay? Because ultimately we are bullish and if we can get out of this short call relatively quickly, then we have on that long call for really cheap. So one thing I forgot to check for you guys is checking the difference in the volatilities here. Uh, this is an increase of about four percentage points. This is getting thrown off though also because the markets are super wide in here and it's kind of making that change a little bit. But you know, like I said, that's a 4% increase that starts making it more of a uh, yellow light between those two months that I'm doing. The one I'm buying uh, out here is a little bit more volatile. You know, I'm only paying 70 cents for it. So that's a pretty good deal. Something else we could look at is uh, Costco. You know, if we wanted to really go after the ones we thought were going to um, do well, maybe Costco for all those reasons, you know, I said that you know, New Jersey all of a sudden can now uh, get their uh, groceries for pretty, or, or get their gas without a card. Um, so I'm looking at the 305s. Why would I pick the 305s here? Well, it's, you know, gonna have some resistance. It's kind of below the 200 day. It's right back at that point of control. So I have the feeling that it's gonna settle down in and around this area. The 305s are, up here, um, they do have earnings coming up. So let's take a look and see when their earnings are um, for Costco. Because I don't want to be selling in a month where they have their earnings. So their earnings are out a little bit. So I would be selling in here, right? There's no binary event. I don't want the binary event in the one I'm shorting. And then I have the binary event out here. So uh, a lot of Everybody's already seen the lines at Costco. Everybody's kind of priced that in. Um, and if you don't think anything's gonna really change, people are gonna continue to have that go on. Then when they come out with their earnings, uh, I think they're gonna knock it out of the park and we'll get that rally. So that's how I came up with my assumption for this. You know, you guys need to do your own homework and come up with your own assumptions. You might think I'm completely off the rocker uh, that, it's not going to work out that way. 
And again, uh, normally we would say move the decimal three ticks to the left here, 30 cents wide. Uh, I can tell you they aren't 30 cents wide after the market. We can see that. During the market, though, these were about 50 cents wide, um, which is pretty darn close to that, that rule uh, that I have set out. And like I said, for the past five years, these are the, the probably the widest markets I've seen for just about anything. I mean, even, even Apple usually is like a nickel wide, and they're like 15 cents wide right now during the open market operations. That still fits the rule, though. And these were fitting a rule, which is why I picked them. I probably should have taken screenshots for you guys. Um, all right, so we want to sell uh, around that 36-ish delta. Normally, I'd roll out in time. So we'll sell that one, um, the 30 delta, which is the two tens, a little bit wider than where I set on those 305s, which is fine, and then go in and buy this one here. So that one's pretty close to where I was looking at. Like I said, because the markets are so wide, I would down ticket a little bit, a little past mid market on these um, and put this order in and then cancel, replace it. Right. So I'd, I'd hit send, confirm and send. If I don't get hit by the time I go over to the monitor tab, find my trade, cancel, replace, uh, move it up like two pennies and then hit confirm, send. And work it that way okay as we'll see on volume and open interest you can see there's pretty good volume even way back here uh the open interest pretty darn good uh you can see they have pretty good open interest here and volume and just about all of these so that means there's eyeballs on there you guys that's really when you're looking at the volume and open interest just shows you that there's some good volume in there we can look at something like uh Thor, which is the one that I was talking about with the RBs, this you can see no volume and no open interest or no volume and no open interest, right? That's the reason why I went out there and uh, just bought the stock. I didn't want to use the stock there. So Costco, let's go back to that example and check it out on the analyze tab. This tries to give you a representation of what the uh, stock looks like here um and a good uh analyze on it we can see that that five dollars and 33 cents is what our max loss is um remember anytime you're doing options they're worth 100 of the underlying so you multiply it by 100 if you're newer and then this is like a risk one to uh make one and a half on it uh, the way that this is set up but when we look at this, the reason why it's impossible to really say uh, what the max profit is and break even and all that. So these are your break even points right here on the red and the max profit. Now watch what happens when I sit there and I move the volume, the volatility higher, which is what we're trying to accomplish. We want that volatility to expand during that binary event I was talking about. So remember this long call out here is during that binary event. So it's getting affected more by this volatility adjustment than the front month. So that affects the um, profitability on it. So if I started seeing the volatility expand, um, that would help us. Just like if I got into this and we started seeing the volatility contract, you can see the break evens are changing. The the peak is going down um, and it's being affected by that volatility coefficient, all right? So that's why we would rather see the volatility expand. Um, another reason why I have it for uh, like an earnings setup, if you're bullish in something for those earnings, you can set this up for a binary event or something like that. But just try and stay away from, you know, if I can drive it home enough, uh, stay away from selling that short call during the binary event, right? Yes, you will lose a lot of volatility uh, if you uh, the volatility comes out of it, um, but it's going to hurt you. It's probably going to move a lot more than you really want it to. Another one I, I like is Walmart. You know, they have the 
the pickup, you can order online, pick up. They kind of worked out all their kinks before uh, this all hit the fan. And uh, I think a lot of people are taking advantage of that. That is a, a stock that I would be looking at as well. So let's go over and see what the markets are. Uh, move the decimal three ticks to the left. 11 cents wide is what I should expect from this. You can see they're about uh, 20 to 30 cents wide. It was probably about 15 cents wide during the open market operations, which is pretty good for this environment. Um, you know, it's a rule of thumb. It's not a hard line rule, you guys. Uh, just to give especially newer traders an idea as to what to look for. So I'm gonna look at the 125 short calls. It's around that 36-ish delta, but moving a little bit out if you were um, more neutral, and then you would go towards those at the monies. And then that's the one we're gonna sell. And then we're gonna go out here and buy the same strike, which is the 125 calls and buy that one. All right, so again, I would move the debit down just a little bit, put that order in just a little bit lower because it doesn't cost me anything. Confirm, send, and then uh, go over to the monitor tab and cancel replace on it, all right? Again, we can look at the monitor tab on this, or the, uh, sorry, the uh, analyze tab. I don't know why that's in there. Um, take a look at this. You can see, again, defined risk strategy. We know how much we can lose. On this one, we're risking one to make two, because you can see it goes up to that 300. So I pay $1.69, that's my max loss. 300 or 169 is my max loss. My max profit is 300. So this is a good one. This is probably the one, if I'm going through trying to get into this consumer staples uh, area or you know with these retailers that I think will do well, uh, I'd probably pick the Walmart over that Costco trade uh, as we're going through it because it fits a lot of those things that I'm looking for. And I think that, do I, Think Costco is going to do better than Walmart? No, not necessarily. Um, so that that would be probably where I would lean. And that's my process. That's how I go through uh, setting up like a trade where I've come up with an assumption. My assumption was, hey, you know, I'm I'm bullish in these uh, grocers. You know, you could look at Kroger as well. Um, they own, you know, Kroger owns like Safeway and a couple other names that are in different areas of uh, the United States. Uh, we don't have Kroger out here. Uh, we have Safeway. So, uh, and uh, I think a lot of people are actually trying that signature brand because, you know, like I was talking to somebody earlier that it might actually help them on their bottom line with Kroger because, you know, we go into the store, a lot of these shelves are empty and everybody has been going for all the uh, name brand stuff. Those are gone. Well, everybody who's kind of late to it's trying signature brand Doritos. And actually those are pretty darn good. So, um, and we went and tried to get Costco when this first all, or not Costco, uh, Walmart, when this first all happened. And I, I love salsa and they didn't have a lot of the salsas I like. So I tried their, their brand, whatever that is. And I think I like it more than the kind that I was originally trying. So it's like, uh, there's going to be a lot of people that come out of this that were no names before or uh, things that people didn't buy that are going to become the thing that they go to. So um, I've been trying a lot of different things. I'm sure you guys have too. And um, you know, those are your opportunities to take advantage of with something like this, where you know it's going to come out of left field for some people that oh my gosh, their earnings went through the roof. I did that with Yo Play back in the day. Um, and when they came out with the yogurt drinks, I was like, this is the best thing since sliced bread. You think about it. You used to have to have a couple of, um, a, a cup of yogurt, stir it up, right? And you had to have a spoon. And then what do you do with your spoon when you're out and about afterwards and all of that stuff? They came out with those yogurt drinks. And I was like, that's just brilliant. Like you give somebody, a yogurt drink, you know, your your cup of yogurt was, let's just say it's a dollar, um, uh, a dollar cup of yogurt, which is, you know, eight ounces or something like that, 
or a drink, which was like six ounces. So you water down the yogurt, you charge twice as much for the drink, and you have half the input cost going into it. Uh, it was just, and when they first, their next earning cycle and everybody was doing those yogurt drinks, it went through the roof. It was like a oh, huge home run. Um, similar to this, you know, are people buying that Walmart brand, whatever that is, more now because all the other things were going off? Well, that's going to help their bottom line, right? That's going to make their earnings do much better. It's not just the, their profit margins on that stuff are much better than their profit margins on, uh, you know, Doritos versus their own chip. So uh, these are the th things that I'm looking for, you know. Are people buying more Kirkland stuff? Uh, because the other, I don't think they've had the issues of having their shelves empty as much as some of the other ones like Kroger and maybe Walmart. But uh, how do you like the store brand TP, LOL? <laughs> that is a good question. Uh, I didn't, that is one thing I didn't go for. Uh, I went for the Huggies wipes, which was something, you know, uh, that is going to be hard to go away from. Um, for sure, uh, as a staple in the house. All right. So, um, so this was, this is one that I'm going to be looking at implementing in the daily market commentary tomorrow. Uh, those are, those are usually when I put on my trades, I talk about in those daily market commentaries, you know, what trades I'm putting on when I'm taking them off, whether I'm making money or losing money on them. And, uh, you know, I don't cherry pick you guys. Right now, uh, you know, I I have a portfolio where I'm talking about how are we lo we lower our cost basis on the underlyings we have in our portfolio. You have a 401k somewhere, you know, you can be lowering, uh, taking advantage or hedging that 401k, and I show you guys how to do that in my webinars too. So um, take advantage of some of the other ones. That's why I'm also saying, you know, don't just necessarily watch this long call calendar webinar again, the exact one, I don't. I think that you should watch it again, but maybe watch one of the other ones. We are gonna cover some of the very similar things like my rules. It's gonna be in different environments and stuff like that. So it'd be good to see those different things play out. Um, so watch this webinar again. It's always going to help. It'll help it stick into your long-term memory. Um, if you watch it relatively soon after, if you watch it down the road a month or two, you're going to be like, what did he say about volatility? Is that supposed to, uh, increase or decrease and all of those things. So some of those nuances might slip out of your memory, but if you watch it again, you will definitely be able to remember it much longer. Uh, what's that? Uh, is the short for the calendar at the money? Now I, you can use the at the money. So a little bit of review, you know, picking the right underlying. We talked about this uh, less than $100, right? It's less than $100. We want it to be less than or equal to about 10 cents wide from the bid ask, from the bid to the offer. All right. In that option montage I showed you, if it's greater than $100, then we basically move the decimal three ticks to the left. Right now, um, one more. Uh, right now, you know, it's almost like times two would be a good rule, but um, move it three ticks to the left and hopefully it's relatively close to that. The environment, we want it to be less than a uh, 2% increase is the real green light, you know, especially if you're newer to options trading, you know, as your risk parameters ex are expanded or if you have a higher risk tolerance, then, you know, then, uh, you know, you'd be maybe saying, okay, uh, three to 4%, something like that, right? The duration, we want this to be about thir the one where the short call, we want to be about 35 days to expiration. And then the strikes, I was saying on the strikes, I like to pick about the 36 ish delta. So it's just out of the money, all right? You can pick the ones that are at the money, but remember, if you're picking the at the money, like most people online will tell you, is that you need that to be pretty tight during that short call, right? We don't want it to be tested and then have that market move during the long call expiration cycle, okay? So that's why I like to go with 
about that 36 delta because I'm kind of expecting it to be more like that in a sense or more like this, right? I have a bullish assumption in it. So I like to go with about the 36-ish delta. And then right now I'm leaning a little bit further out. Uh, where do we watch the previous webinars? That's a great question. Let me get uh, at the money premium is better. It is, but you know, they're relative, right? The at the money premium, you're getting paid more for taking that risk on the at the money, Francis, but then you're also buying the same strike further out and you're, you're paying more for that, right? Um, so it's a bit relative. And I, I talk about in other webinars, you know, the 36 is delta is a real sweet spot because if you get that move happening to your um, uh, your short strike, your return on capital is actually much better there than the ones that are right there at the money. Yes, it feels like it, it you know, all of a sudden you're looking at, oh yeah, well I made, uh, you know, $800 on this one. And if I would have picked Wolfman's 36 Delta, I would have only made, you know, 500 on it, right? Well, yeah, but in that 800, when you were risking uh, a lot more than what I was risking. So, you know, I might be risking one to make two and you are risking one to make one, all right? So that's what I would think. Uh, do you think next earnings season can be uh, a very nice opportunity to be long call port, uh, to build a long call portfolio. Um, I think there's going to be some that are going to be devastating. You know, I think that travel and leisure could be a lot worse than what we're, we're hearing right now. I mean, I can't remember what the number was. My uh, friend told me how much Airbnb had to refund all of the uh, owners of the properties, but it was pretty astounding. So there is going to be some opportunities. I think that, you know, like Walmart, I think Costco is going to do well. I think that, um, you know, I think that like, like I said, Thor, I think that there, there are people out there seriously considering buying a fifth wheel or a pull behind trailer or something like that. And, and because you're, everybody's getting cabin fever. What do you do? You can't go out to the movies or do anything else. Well, you go camping. You're still social distancing by going camping. Um, I know a lot of the uh, national parks are closed and stuff like that, but there's still places to go camping, All right? So somebody was asking, how do we watch some of those previous webinars? Well, you can take advantage of this right here. I'm putting the link in the chat window. So you have unlimited access to me. So especially if you're a newer trader, you can uh, email me. And if I can't answer you an email, I will call you, which I, I have gotten inundated with emails. I have a no inbox policy, you guys. If you send me an email, I am going to respond to you. And uh, I can't tell you what I think you should do. I can tell you what I would do based on my rules and my my uh, trading. All right. So take advantage of that. You also get all the daily market commentaries. These daily market commentary videos, I talk about uh, every single trade I do. So you know, you see on TV, these guys talking about, well, you know, 500% gain if you would have done these long calls and stuff like that. Well, they also are cherry picking those. They're not telling you the ones that they lost money on, which is ridiculous. I talk about the ones that I'm losing on probably more than the ones that I'm making money on. Why? Because those are the ones I'm staying mechanical with. Those are the ones that we need a lower cost basis on. You know, the losing trades are the ones that we are have at top of mind and I talk about how you manage that risk, which is absolutely uh, more important than talking about the winners. You don't lose, you don't learn anything from how you won on a trade. So uh, it's, it's important, if not more important to talk about those losing trades as far as I'm concerned. If you're watching this on tape delay, you're gonna have to punch that into your URL. It's not a hot link up there. So you can take advantage of that uh, more easily if you're watching the video right now in the chat window, which is, I think, where I put that link. So um, let's see if I click on, oh, I didn't send it yet. Sorry, it's now in there. Now, if I hit the hot link, it should work. Um, also, you get over 50 videos. As a matter of fact, 
you know, you can find some content online. Um, it's not going to be broken down. So this is the link that just popped up for me. Um, but this is broken down. And what we do with this is, uh, let me go to the next page here and see if I can do that. So what we do is we have like little boxes like this where it basically checks them off. All right, I watched that, you know, um, call diagonal for option for intermediaries. If you're a newer option trader, I really drill down on different aspects of that geared towards the newer trader. So it's, it's these different courses might have the same webinar or the same title where it's a long call web, uh, webinar, but I'm drilling down on things. I might talk about the deltas a little bit more uh, than what I would in this particular video, but basically you watch those and you can check them off on a risk reversal or um, a collar, which is really important to be trying to throw on in and around this. Um, you know, I talk about the collar, how th that's the that's the Mark Cuban collar, um, stuff like that. Um, again, then for advanced traders, have higher risk tolerance, things of that nature. Uh, so as you've gone through it, you know, if you watch the, uh, the building it out for the beginners, and then now we start looking at options for advanced traders, I'm, I'm going to forget about some of those nuances that I think the newer traders need. And we build on that. Uh, we go more in depth with these ones that are further out volatility strategies. So, um, so that you can narrow down your your process, you know immediately. If you go through this, you guys are gonna have like a PhD in options trading. Uh, if you're watching online or watching guys on TV talk about how to trade options, that's free. But you know what? It's also worth free, zero. It's th those guys, when you watch my webinars and then watch these guys on TV and uh, in other places, you're gonna realize the the, uh, pitfalls that you're getting involved in when you're you're following those guys' trade recommendations because it doesn't fit my rules and I explain why I have these rules involved in there like that volatility why we don't want that expansion nobody else is talking about that kind of stuff how you have the different volatilities in the different months they're just going to say there's different volatility they're not giving you the some parameters that you need to follow in order to be successful, to increase your probabilities of success. That's what I'm always trying to make sure you guys are aware of is if you're building these strategies out according to some of the rules that I've come up with, you're increasing your probabilities of success. And hopefully I do a good job of explaining how that all works out. Just like with uh, the volatility difference, right? I'm trying to explain to you guys, make sure there's not a major difference increasing to the back month because you don't want to be paying a lot for volatility in that back month versus the one you're selling because that uh, decreases your probabilities of success. Ultimately, if you're paying a lot for volatility and that volatility starts going down, that's going to hurt you. But if they're relatively same, then uh, they're going to uh, kind of meld each other out for lack of a better phrase. So like I said, you can get this for $97 a month, have unlimited access to me. So like if you're looking for a mentor or something like that, you've been looking for that, uh, this is the one to take advantage of. Also, again, you know, different strategies for bearish markets. Once you're done with all of this, you're gonna come up with an assumption. You're gonna know exactly what strategies to put, how to put those on, and uh, you really will be self-sufficient. Um, all right, this is also the link uh, right here. Again, it is not a uh, it is not a hot link. You'll have to type it into your URL if you are watching this on tape delay. Um, link over there in the chat box. We've been going back and forth in the questions box. Chat box has the hot link for it that you can pull right up and hit it. Um, all right, so thank you guys all. Again, uh, if you have any questions or comments, a webinar you want to see me do, reach out to us at 310-598-6677 or email me at trading at protraderstrategies.com.
All right. Um, one other thing I have to do at the end of all of these webinars is make sure you guys are aware of the disclaimer. There is uh, the possibility you could lose money trading. There's, we are an educational company. I am not trying to get you guys to go out there and follow my market assumption in Walmart. All right. Um, I'm not trying to tell you that the consumer staples area is going to do very well. They might not. All right. So it's just I'm giving you guys trying to get you guys thinking um, at what you guys are already doing, but then layer on top of it option strategies. And I try to guide you into the right strategy for your market assumption. And we drill down on that with using volatility, uh, duration, all of those things to help increase the probabilities of success. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be successful on every single trade. All right. So take a moment to go over this. If you are watching on tape delay, you might need to pause it and uh, read over that. All right. That's all I got for you guys. Other than if you can't take that, take it easy. Thank you, JQ. Good timing on that one. It's almost like I was reading it. <laughs> See you guys. Take care. Thanks, Alex. Alexander. Thank you guys all. Appreciate the kind words. Bye for now.